The family of a 17-year-old boy shot by police while sitting in his car eating a hamburger, well, they say he's currently unconscious and on life support. Earlier reports that Eric Cantu is in stable condition are false, according to the family's lawyer. Hmm. San Antonio police officer James Brennan, who was still on his probationary period, was fired after shooting Cantu while confronting him in the parking lot of a McDonald's. Here's the body camera footage. We want to warn you, it is graphic. Get out of the car. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Although Cantu was originally arrested for evading police and ag aggravated assault, prosecutors have announced they will not be seeing those charges through. According to recent reporting from Curbed, Police chases now kill more people nationwide than tornadoes, lightning, and hurricanes combined. Mm. Yeah, that video, it never ceases to amaze me because there isn't an announcement about who the people are. It's people dr with guns drawn, wrenching open a door, you know, responding to someone whose both hands are visible on a, on, a, on a McDonald's burger and then to start shooting like that as he starts pulling away as I think a lot of people frighten that situation. You know, wh and do. wildly um, putting at risk any bystanders, or there's someone else in the car, and that there's that building right there. I mean, just opening fire wildly, even if you even if you are discounting the risk to the person, which I don't think you should, which but you, you're putting the. We, yet, we, we don't want our police to just randomly spray bullets and, and, everywhere. And here's, here's the fundamental the slightest point. Provocation. Like, I, I do think that it, it, the, the, the article about the, the cars causing so many uh, deaths as well, it's, it's interesting that all part and parcel of the same thing. And what's causing a lot of those deaths is this practice called pitting, where police use the car to stop another car for, let's say, a speeding violation or some other kind of traffic issue. There was one incident, or at least one incident, where uh, police officers stopped a bike so hard that the bike's wheels ended up getting jammed up in the car's wheels. There are kinds of force that are kind of presumptively assumed to be relatively safe when they obviously aren't stopping a bike with a car, stopping a car with another car, creating a car crash. That if you really think it through and you think about the, the risk involved, it obviously is not commensurate with what the objective of the stop is. Is the objective to catch people who are speeding? If the risk is death, if you're trying to stop people, someone from, let's say, fleeing an actual crime, if the risk is death, is death a sentence that would have been put upon the person if they were tried by a jury of their peers and convicted? No? Well, then why in an extrajudicial setting are we saying it's, it's, it's appropriate for police officers to be acting with that level of force? And I think it comes down to a fundamental lack of respect for human life. There are people who are have been very famous this week for wearing White Lives Matter t-shirts. Is it White Lives Matter to encourage a police department who would shoot at a young white boy like this who's speeding off in a vehicle? Or is this a fundamental respect, uh, disrespect for human life that is really calling into question people who say, well, all lives matter. Obviously, we live in a world where that's not I mean, the case for so many people. Look, I think this specific incident is pretty clear cut. Um, it's not even really clear that what he was doing was trying to flee the sea. It's like a it's like no. a nanosecond before he is fired on wildly. Um, more generally, though, I mean, I don't know that. So these chases are very dangerous. Um, yes. But I don't like. What is the? What is obviously, the we're not going to arrive at a place where the if you just if you're pulled over for speeding and you just drive off wildly and the police are just supposed to say, eh, well, Robbie, oh let's, well, let's let's play that out. If 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 the police were in a position to chase you, pulled up behind you, and you sped off, they have your driver's license. Right. I mean, so they have your um your. But that's what prompted plate. this encounter but because what? this police officer. Yeah. thought that this person had driven away from him but, on a but previous... Let's, but let's talk about it. They have your license plate. Right. As we talked about extensively on the show, we live in a surveillance state. There's right. traffic cameras at almost every corner. So even if for some reason they didn't see your license plate, they can track you and follow you. You're registered at the DMV. So is the worst case scenario here that they come to your house 30 minutes later, show up at your door the next morning, follow you to your job 
doing police work the next day yeah, and arrest yeah. you or question you or do whatever at that point. And isn't that a better outcome than chasing people down the street in a way that can cause pedestrians to be hit, other cars to end up in a pileup, and the person themselves, who again has not been convicted of any crime, and in this case clearly hasn't even really done anything wrong, could lose their lives? Like, it, it's worth playing these scenarios out because it's often presented as this all or nothing. Well, criminals will get away if we don't shoot them dead. One, you don't know that they're criminals. Even And two, even if they are, they don't deserve the death penalty. And three, there is still an ability to hold people right. accountable, even if you don't catch them this moment. And what is it about our society? What is it about how police are being taught and trained that makes them feel the level of urgency that they would rather risk the lives of their fellow citizens? than to simply delay the capture of somebody or the questioning of somebody for 30 minutes, 24 hours, whatever it is down the line. Okay, but I also just, I don't understand the impulse the, to, to flee wildly from a police interaction because that increases the risk to your own life dramatically. You, you, so don't, you should not do that. You don't do see that. a video like that. You don't see I don't see the, a video like that and say, wow, more people should, should Robbie, you slam just, on the gas. You just admitted that you don't encounter. think it's clear that that person even did that. It's not clear right. to me that person didn't slam on the gas. It looked like they were kind of rolling away. Were they in? in were they in park? I, I have no idea what yeah, that I situation was. I think this one is, is clear cut, but we've covered other police. Um, but this, this is a this is a burden shifting that is just not appropriate. The average well, you're citizen. About this in wait general. a minute. But wait a minute. The police standard for whether or not their behavior, the law has designed it so the police standard for their behavior, whether or not it is, is legitimate or not, is whether a reasonable, as a reasonable police no, no, officer don't, standard. Don't to bait me at defending the police. Wait, wait a minute, I'm not trying to bait you. I'm, I'm, I'm directing this to an audience, not to you. A reasonable police officer standard basically means that whatever they decide was going to save their life, whatever yeah. their, their, their subjective experience of danger is, justifies all kinds of behavior. But we don't give the same credibility, we don't give that same flexibility to the average person who is not trained, who has probably never had a gun pointed to them, who is sitting there in the dark enjoying their dinner probably after a late shift to themselves, and who we are expected to exercise all of this aplomb all of this gravitas, all of this surety in a moment of extreme panic. Why don't we hold police officers who are armed by the state to protect our communities because of qualified to a immunity, higher standard? Which needs to be gotten rid of. Qualified immunity should be gotten it is, rid of. It is partly because of qualified immunity, and it's partly because of a rhetoric that puts all of the onus on untrained civilians to behave like soldiers and to have the responsiveness of a highly trained police force when we don't hold a highly trained police force to those same standards. Yeah, this... I do not disagree. Don't make me out to be like the pro police voice on the on the panel. I want to get rid of qualified immunity. This police officer was fired, and they should explore whether it's appropriate to file charges. Oh, yeah. It may very well and, be and it's appropriate. And also worth noting, this police officer was apparently on probation. So there's a lot of conversation, oftentimes wrong, uh, about how when a criminal does something that they were out on bail or they shouldn't be. Why? Th this, this is a similar situation. A police officer who arguably should not have been in the streets in the first instance, where is the conversation about the lack of accountability for the police did, department um, who let this person out here who clearly shouldn't have been just out Just by here. the way, I did look up, because I was curious yeah. about this statistic that there's more by, uh, uh, deadly car chase deaths than, what do they say, hurricane and lightning strikes and all that. So this is, so I traced this statistic back to a Slate magazine piece from a while ago. Uh, and uh, so police chases are deadlier than tornadoes, lightning, and hurricane combined. Really that's almost though because those things are not, do not kill as many people in, in recent times as you might think. So the, the statistic is in the past three and a half decades, more than 5,000 bystanders and passengers, and then more than 11,000 people cumulatively. So 11,000 people in like 40 years, which is not, which is still. No, well, if it's your person, number. Robbie, no, it's your person, absolutely. it matters quite a bit. Um, nice to know the, <laughs> the extreme weather deaths are even lower than that, but it's another. Another conversation. I see you rolling your eyes at me. We'll have more rising after this. Stay tuned.